Good morning, everybody, and hope you had a good weekend. Um, congratulations again to uh, Notre Dame. Uh, they're really good. They played us like they played for three quarters against Ohio State. That's what I was afraid of. But we had their respect, and they came in ready to play. They had a great plan, and they're big. They're physical. They run. They'll be the two best lines of scrimmage I think we'll play. Um, have been each year since we've been here, and that's why they won 26 straight ACC regular season games. Them and Clemson have dominated this league. And the rest of us are trying to get there. We, we, we want to be like Notre Dame. We want to be able to line up, run the ball when we want to, and then everything's there in, in your offense. You've got all your play action, and the young quarterback played really, really well. And we were unlucky that we had his second week, not his first week, because he was much better this week and much more prepared, much more relaxed than uh, than before, and, and when you can run the ball as well as they do, it, it makes it easy. Protection's easy, you can't get there. Uh, you, you take linebackers and safeties and put them in the running game to try to stop it, and then the passing game's there for you with the wheels and and the, the deep post they threw over the safety's head. Uh, just everything's there. And then they make it very difficult to run the ball. And when they do, then you've got to make plays in the passing game. But what happened is our, our positive plays uh, deep plays for touchdowns hurt our defense in a weird way uh, because we had three three and outs so the defense is on the field too long early in the game and then we come in and throw one one play deep touchdown and the defense is right back on the field so we've got to we've got to run the ball better offensively to try to stay on the field more I think we're averaging like 27 minutes a game and we're scoring fast but we're, we're not consistently good enough in the running game. We're getting running yards in a lot of cases, but it's a big play. It's not, uh, it's, it's not uh, first down runs, and, and we're, we're doing very poorly in, in that area. Uh, I was very proud of our guys that they kept fighting. They could have very well laid down and given up because they were physically getting beaten and, and mentally Notre Dame was scoring. It was frustrating for us, and the guys put so much into the game, and, and they didn't quit. They kept fighting, and I'm really, really proud of that. It does matter. It matters for now. It matters in their life. Um, and, and actually hung in there and kept themselves in a position to have a chance to, to get back in the ball game. If you think about it, we missed three two-point plays. Um, two of them we missed, uh, and one was a, a throw that was too high, and one was a, a close call with uh, Bryson Nesbitt in the end zone. Uh, the other one was the celebration call that we had very little chance to make. But if you make those three, you got a seven-point ball game. At the end of the game, when we're getting ready to onside kick, and uh, I can't talk about officiating as such, but so many weird things happened in that game. We get ready to kick the onside kick. We actually kick it. The whistle blows. We're trying to figure out why they called a sideline warning. I've never seen that before. So I had some, I had some new ones come up for 34 years as a head coach on, on Saturday. Uh, but again, the, the kids can see some hope. Uh, and, and with that hope, we would have had a chance to win the game if we just do a few more things. And, and we didn't play very well. We played hard. Uh, offensively, um, well, and, and we're still excited. We're three and one headed into conference play. And that's better than we were this time last year. So we got a, got a lot of positive things moving forward. Offensively, I was, uh, like I said, I've, I've been very disappointed in, in running games, especially on early downs. We, we have entirely too many one yard gain, two yard losses on first downs. And, and we, we've done a great job on third downs considering we have to overcome so many third and longs. And that's something we've done for, for four years. We've got to change it. We've got to fix it. We've got to be better on first downs. And, and again, you've got to stay on the field more offensively to, to help your defense because we, we get beat down on defense because they're out there so much. Um, a couple of things that have been very positive, we, we challenged our offense to um, do a better job in the red zone with touchdowns. They, they've still scored a touchdown every time in the red zone, unlike last year. So that's really been an improvement. Uh, the other thing, we've given up nine sacks this year in four games. Last year we gave up 17. So those are two areas that we are better. And, and the offensive line did an amazing job on Saturday um, considering how poorly we ran the ball. Because Notre Dame knew we were going to throw it and still had trouble getting there. They got there three times, but um, that, that uh, we, we have got to do a better job 
of running the ball <coughs> to, to try to help our, our offensive line with pass protection. Um, and some of that's inconsistency in, in, with the running backs. We're, we're probably playing so many, we've got to get it down to where we're, we've got a couple that when they got the hot hand, they'll stay in and nobody had the hot hand on, on Saturday. So we've got to keep looking at what is wrong with the running game and what do we need to do to fix it. Um, and, and again, the offensive line is, is playing pretty well. Drake leads the nation in touchdown passes. He's got 16 touchdowns and one interception and the one interception was um, deemed that it should have been a flag. So really and truly, he shouldn't have an interception on the books, but he is doing an amazing job. He threw five touchdowns on Saturday. He, he um, scored 32 points and, and he's mad at himself for the ones he missed. Uh, that's how competitive he is. So um, he gives us a chance because we can score points offensively to be in every game and, and never be out of a game. And that's the other thing I told the guys on Saturday, you're never out of a game with Drake May. Because we've got skill, we've got speed. And if you're down, don't, don't get your head down. We look at the scoreboard and go back to work because you have a chance to come back and, and make plays. Uh, can't have the turnover. Quarterback's usually the, the worst ball security on the team because you don't ever hit him. So he's got to do a better job of <clears throat> tucking that ball away when he scrambles because he's a really good scrambler. And he puts himself in a position to make plays with his feet. And he's got big hands, but he, he's going to have to cover the ball up uh, when he's trying to scramble out with great defensive players like Notre Dame has around him. <coughs> Excuse me, it was documented I screamed some Saturday. <coughs> so, a little, little voice issue there. So offensively, again, we, we, we don't need the big play, bad play. We, we need the big plays, but we got to be more consistent. And, and not have the, the bad plays. And that's really, really important to us is consistency in the running game. The two guys that played the best on offense were Corey Gaynor and um, uh, Awesome Richards. We don't have players of the game when we don't win the game, but those two guys <coughs> graded out the best of, of, of the offense team uh, entirely. Defensively, uh, we're very disappointed. Um, we, we, have good players, we have good coaches. I'm not sure what the disconnect, but it's there, it's real. Uh, you can't hide from it. We are playing good at times. We played a good first quarter, and then all of a sudden we, we have a blitz. We should be sacking uh, their quarterback, and he scrambles uh, eight yards for a first down. And then it seems like we get down and, and uh, start giving up plays. And, and we gave up 24 points in the last five minutes of the half and the first five minutes of the second half that changed that game. It was 14-14, and, and we gave them opportunity. They scored 10 points before the half, and part of it is they score a touchdown to make 21-14. We've got to go back and score offensively. We have three quick plays and out, <clears throat> and give them a short field to go down and kick a field goal. So offensively, we've still got to help, but, but then we come back out, and you have to stop them to start the third quarter, and they drive 75 yards for a touchdown. And, and, and an easy touchdown, which you cannot do if you're gonna win the game. And then we fumble the first play and they go score. And while I was so passionate about the fourth down call, that changed the game. We get a stop there. We're still in the game with a chance to, to a great lift for our defense. Cause we, we talked to them about uh, uh, turnovers, sudden change plays, and they came out and stopped them. And then it's a, a very close call. Um, and, and then they, they get the ball and, and go ahead and score. That was a key play in this ball game. And, and, and talk about me, one, one of the coaches wanted to come over and grab me. Like I said, I'm not out of control. I'm fighting for my team. That's what I'm doing. I'm fully controlled. I know exactly what I'm doing. I didn't appreciate the call and I was fighting for the team because it's fourth down. It's a critical play. And they're in a great shape to, to have a comeback. Their defense is struggling, is fighting, man. And, and I'm, I'm trying to fight with them. That's important. Hess came over and grabbed me. I said, don't touch me. I don't need anybody grabbing me. I'm not out of control. I'm fighting for my team. It's, not, it's very simple. Because these guys are struggling and they need support. And, and I'm here to, to step up and, and, and support them. Um, 
So again, the offense has to help the defense, but until we stop the run, we're not gonna win games at, at the highest level. We're gonna be inconsistent. You can't outscore people all the time. We have got to stop the run. Notre Dame's a, a, a hard challenge, but um, good for us that we saw it. We should get better because of this game, because they know what it looks like on both sides of the ball. Notre Dame stopped our run, and Notre Dame ran the ball against us. And that's what we have to do to be the team and the program that, that we want. Ross asked me after the game, what, what changes? Uh, you keep recruiting and you keep coaching. They, they've had tradition for many, many years. They've had top 10 recruiting classes every year. Our best players are our youngest ones, by and large. You've got to keep working to get where they are. It doesn't happen overnight. And, and that's, uh, that's what we're doing. So our, our cho coaches have challenged themselves. The defensive coaches are beaten down because they're frustrated. The players get beaten down because they're frustrated. Somebody asked about players with some flair on the sideline, good for them. What if they quit? What if I just laid down and quit? Said, heck with it, I'm, I'm frustrated, man. I'm not gonna compete. That's not what life's about. Life's about passion. Life's about flair. So I don't mind at all if one pushes another one. I, I want them to grow up and mature. I said, you just pushed a guy with millions of people watching you. And you know what, they don't even know you. And they're gonna have a bad impression and all you're doing is trying to fight and compete. That's what you're trying to do. So instead of walking, sitting in a corner of the bench and not talking to each other, I'd rather have them have spirit. I said, we're pushing these kids to have a player-led team. So if they're gonna push each other, they're gonna have to grow up and handle the push. That's it, talk to each other, be mature. One of them on the bench said, can you give me just a minute? Because I heard one of the guys saying, come on man, pick it up. He said, give me, give me just a second. Let me gather myself here before we, before we get into this discussion. So they're, they're learning. They're learning how to compete. They're learning how to have passion at a time where most people are against them. Everything that's talked about on our defense is, is talking about how bad they are. And these kids are fighting it. And, and, and that's a positive thing. And I really believe they're gonna be good before the year's over. Are the stats gonna be good? No, we're already too bad. Statistically, we're gonna be one of the worst teams in the country on defense at the end of the year because we're already there. But can they get better? Do they show signs? Yeah, it's a great first quarter. Now, why don't we do it the second quarter? Had a great fourth quarter at, at uh, uh, Georgia State. Had a great second and third quarter at App State. Why don't we play a whole game? That's what we gotta figure out. That's what we've gotta figure out. Um, the, def the best players on defense were Ray Vahasek. And I hated, he got hit in the back on, on his personal foul and knocked into the quarterback. So, I mean, he totally, Des Evans ran into him trying to stop and knocked him out of bounds and he fell into the quarterback. And everybody's cussing poor old Ray about not having any discipline. Ray came over and said, coach, I got pushed, man. I, I didn't hit the guy. I said, I got it. So those are things you see and you hear that you, you may not get uh, during a, a TV broadcast. And they, the other guys that played the best they've played all year were our cornerbacks. They, they played good and, and have struggled some. So uh, other than that, really nobody stepped up and played like they had to play. Now again, you start looking at guys competing. They're driving down to, to score with the big back on the last drive and he's trying to reach the ball over, and freshman Will Hardy reaches out and slaps the ball out of his hand at the six inch line to get us the ball back, to give us a chance to go back and score. A freshman, fourth game, and he's so aware that he's fighting his guts out to knock that ball loose so we can get the ball and go back and try to still win the game. So I'm proud of Will Hardy. I'm proud of those guys for fighting. They didn't lay down, they didn't quit. Uh, somebody said, why didn't you kick an onside kick and instead of giving them the ball back with nine minutes left? I think he got 9% chance to get an onside kick. Now, maybe that was more than we had to stop. I don't know. But it was, I thought we had a better chance to knock a ball loose or get a stop than I did onside kick at, at that uh, early stage of the game. I thought it was an awful message to our defense just doing that. But Ray Vahasek and the cornerbacks uh, played well. They, they played better, and, and they got better as, as the game came on. Uh, special teams, um, we're playing hard, we're doing okay, we're not changing games. Special teams do not matter unless you change the game. 
And you don't want to change it in a negative fashion, but you want to change it in a positive fashion. And, and we've taken Josh out of the uh, punt return. We'll have to look at whether he goes back because he, he seemed to do okay during the game. He played more plays. I think um, um, Antoine Green only played 30, I think, right at it. But, uh, but Josh played more. So we'll see how he is when we uh, – he seemed good yesterday. Both of them did. So I think they came out of the game good, and we can get them back in the, the regular rotation right now. Uh, the outstanding player of, of the uh, special teams was Drew Little. He played the best, uh, and he, he covered the punts. We had more punts than we wanted. Um, and we did have a surprise yesterday. Jonathan Kim came in and said he wanted to be the starting field goal kicker, and he's not because Noah Burnett's done a really good job. And Jonathan wants to transfer, so he has a chance to kick somewhere else. So we'll let Noah Burnett do our kickoffs. Uh, the reason it's now, uh, unlike it used to be, it's the fourth game. He doesn't want to play in the fifth game because he wants to redshirt. And then he wants to um, uh, transfer and have two years left somewhere else because the COVID year gives these kids an extra year. So he will not be part of our team anymore. We want to thank him for all he's done. He's been one of the best in the country at kickoffs. Uh, so we appreciate him. Uh, and want to wish him luck. Um, officiating. I can't talk about officiate in our game or I get suspended, which I, I don't think is a good rule, but that's, that, that's what the, the rule states. So I'm going to talk a little bit about national officiating. Um, when you start looking at officiating across the country, who are these guys? These are men that care so much about football and they're very passionate and they work hard all week and then they come and, and referee a, a game, usually on national TV, under tremendous scrutiny like the players and the coaches. So you have to really admire who they are and the passion they have. The, the problem I've got with national recruiting is the inconsistency. What is pass interference anymore? You sit and watch TV, I don't know. I'm not sure you shouldn't throw it deep every time and just hope you get a call. So I'd like to see more consistency in calling pass interference on a national level. I would like to see more consistency on calling holding. What is holding? When does it take them down? Because those two calls make more difference in, in college football than, than anything else. And then I'd like to see more consistency in, in celebration. As long as you're not taunting the other team we, we'll allow a defensive lineman to go dance after a sack, but we won't let a, a, a receiver drop a ball and spin it a little bit. Not in anybody's face. So I'd like for us to go back and revisit the celebration rules so we can be more consistent on what that means. Uh, same thing with roughing the passer. Sometimes if you touch him, it's a penalty. Uh, sometimes you, you hit him hard and uh, it's, it's usually a penalty, and the last one's targeting. It's really, really hard when a five foot nine guy is running the ball and he turns the corner, and, and there's absolutely no target area for a, a defensive back to hit anymore. So it's going to be targeting if a receiver, or a running back, or somebody is running and really low. What do you do? You, you got to try to hit him with your shoulder on the shoulder. So we've got to continue to revisit those. And I still wish targeting would be a, a 15 yard penalty and, and not take him out of the game unless they felt like it was such an awful penalty because it, it, it was dangerous to the other player. Let them play, let them play. And, and if it's an unprotected player and, and you're taking a shot at his head, get him out of the game. Everybody understands that. But, but don't, don't go hurt them. And the last thing about officiating is I think it should be upstairs. If there is a bad call on the field or a missed call on the field, have your best official with replay. And, and they replay everything anyway, mostly. But don't have anything you can't replay. Don't have the official come over. Don't have him stand there for five minutes. Don't slow the game down. But have the guy upstairs call down and say, the right tackle was holding. He took the guy down, call a 15 yard penalty. Instead of having human error and, and having the game lost. We had four coaches fired in this league last year. We had one fired yesterday. Winning's important, man. 
And when you say, why did that coach look so passionate? This is what we do. Why do those kids, why are they so passionate? They, have, they put tremendous pressure on themselves to win games. That's what we do. So we have human errors with coaches. We have human errors with players. Why don't we take the human error away from officials? By having a call upstairs. Wouldn't take longer. Everybody says, well, we don't want more replays. It wouldn't be. All he has to do is look at it and say, no, no, no that was a penalty. The guy grabbed him. You didn't see it. It's holding on 15. So that's, that's as simple as it has to be. He sees everything upstairs. The guys on the field have a very difficult job because we substitute more than ever. We go faster than ever, and it's impossible to see everything. Upstairs, you got time to see it and replay it before the, the snap of the ball. And, and that's something else I'd, I'd love to see. Last thing, and I'll, I'll answer your questions, is I, I, I really like Jeff Collins. I hate to see him fired. He's a good man. He's passionate about Georgia Tech. He's passionate about football. He got fired in his, the first part of his fourth year. If that had been the deal when I was here, I wouldn't be in the Hall of Fame. I would have been fired. I think we're firing people too quickly. He took over a completely dis different system than he, he runs and doesn't have time to, to change that system and rebuild. And what happens is he also had two of the best players recruited off his campus last year to go somewhere else. That's the trouble with the transfer portal. You lose your two best players and then somebody fires you the next year. It's harder to get them in than it is lose them anymore with a transfer port. So we've got to look at the guys coming off of your campus and going somewhere else if you didn't have a great year. The other thing is, and there are a lot of people that we're talking to today that have been fired. It's one of the most devastating things that can possibly happen in your life. Some can't eat, all have to move, change jobs, being fired is a very difficult thing. So when, when fans say, oh man, I'm glad we got us a new coach, this one's gone. You don't only fire Jeff, because he'll be okay, he's got to buy out. You fire everybody else in the building. If I got fired today, there'd be 53 people in this building that have to go find a job somewhere else. 53. So when we start talking about coaches fighting for their jobs, Coaches being passionate during ball games and, and being fired, it, it doesn't affect just the coach, man. It affects that team. It affects everybody on that staff. And you just think, if you were fired today, um, that, that's how the, that staff fits. That's how that staff fits. So Jeff will be fine. He's a good coach. He's a friend of mine. Uh, I appreciate who he is. He's always been first class. He goes by the rules. He's done everything right. Uh, he'll be fine, but let's not uh, let it slide by that, that everybody else in that building may not have a job, and that's just part of it. So we, we shouldn't take lightly when people get fired. Questions? Coach, you talked a lot about the sacrifice of the big play to try and give more time to the defense and rest up. I mean, where do you find that balance? Do you yeah. honestly say to yourself, hey, we don't want to get a 75 yard touchdown pass so we can run the ball and maybe give an extra minute yeah. or two to the defense and rest? No, oh, I'm sorry, that's what you heard. That's not what I said. So let's start back over. We want to move the ball and score points. I don't want the three and outs. I don't mind the 75 yard touchdown. But if you can't run the ball and you live just by the deep play, then you're not going to win many games. We have to run the ball consistently better to help our protection and keep our offense on the field and still get the big plays. We're getting the big plays. We're scoring touchdowns in the red zone. We have fewer sacks. We are not running the ball consistently. And that's my concern. The best teams in the country run the ball consistently. Notre Dame has a chance to win the rest of their games because of the way I saw them line up run the football. We have to have a hot quarterback right now. We can't just depend on going out and being physical and, and winning the game and the running game. And that's what we've got to do. Matt, to that point where it, it seems to me like you're talking about the offense kind of protecting the defense, if you will, a little bit more by running the ball. Does that mean that maybe you guys go a little less tempo and, and, and instead yeah. more or sugar? 
it, it's a good point, CL. I'm not, I, I'm, I must, I'm missing the point here, I think. My point is that we need to run the ball better so we can consistently score against a good defense on offense. By doing that, we have fewer three and outs. I'm not trying to slow the clock down. I'm not trying to slow our offense down. What's happened is our offense is getting too much credit because we're scoring so many points. In my opinion, we have problems on our offense and those problems are running the ball. And there's gonna be a day where you're not gonna, we, we can't depend on Drake and those receivers to win every game. We need to be physical and we gotta run the ball and we gotta beat the other team defenses down like Notre Dame beat us down. And we're not doing that. And that's my concern. That hurts our defense when they're on the field too much. If we're scoring every time, I don't care. We can have a tired defense. But when you have three, three and outs in a row, and your defense is back out there, then you come out and throw a touchdown pass on the first play, they've been out there a whole lot, and they're worn out. And I thought that probably affected the, the five minutes before the half, because we weren't on the field enough in that second quarter. Matt, you talk, <coughs> sorry, got me too. You talked about recruiting a lot on Saturday night, and the difference in the talent level of Notre Dame, and y'all. Y'all recruit a ball on defense a lot. There's four or five stars on there. Some are a little bit younger. And then you mentioned there's a little disconnect between the good players, the good players, the coaches. So what is the issue why the defensive line can't get to where it's competing with teams like Notre Dame and other good teams? Is it fundamentals? Is it development? Is it strength and conditioning? Like, what do you yeah. think the issue is why your very well recruited defensive line isn't standing yeah. up? It's been kind of four games now. Yeah, some I, issues. I, I agree. And, and you have to be careful with the word disconnect. Obviously, things aren't working <laughs> well. So whether it's disconnect, whether it, what, what we're doing is we're inconsistent. We're still sticking ahead in the wrong hole. And, we're, and, and it's amazing. Gene and I were talking about it hard last night. And nine guys do exactly what they're supposed to do. And then a guy gets his head stuck inside and they bounce the ball outside for 15 yards. So uh, Gene will talk to you about that today. but. I think that's the biggest thing. Travis Shaw came in and did a great job on Saturday. And, and he's 17 and been here, what, uh, six months. So, um, the, the, but, but we're, we are not playing well, consistently well, across the board on defense. We're just not. And, and people will beat up the offensive line when you have sacks, and it may not be their fault. People beat up the defensive line when you're giving up running yards. Linebackers had trouble Saturday too. They really struggled. So some of it may be that your line played great at times and your linebacker fields were at the wrong place. The, the sack on, on uh, their, their quarterback should have been a sack on the third and eight. We had a linebacker go inside and outside. If he goes outside, we, we've contained and it's a sack and, and we're still playing great. Instead, he takes the wrong path and the guy steps around it and, and has the easy first down. So, but but Gene can explain more of that to you um, when yeah. he gets here. You mentioned consistency, though. Like, why is there not consistency after four years and now four games? Like, what, it, it has to be some other issue that you thought about in terms of what, why this defense can't get consistent. We say consistent all we want, but yeah, I can I can say five different things, and you're going to say they're all an excuse. So it doesn't matter. It is what it is. We got to fix it. We're looking hard to fix it. Um, am I consistent in everything in my life and I'm 71? No. Are you? No. And these are young guys, uh, but they got a lot of pride and, and the coaches are, are I'm, I'm having to pick, I beat them down so much, I've got to pick them up. And I, I, you asked me what the fans should feel about our defense. We should be very unique here. And, and we've got a really powerful offense and a chance to be really good. We should take a, a, a defense that's really struggling and have a fan base that picks them up. What a concept that would be. Oh my gosh. Why don't we be positive as a fan base to help somebody that's struggling instead of our, our society being just, they're bad. They should all be fired. That, that's, the, that's the new term. Um, so, and, and it, it's complicated enough. If it was as easy as you want it to be in the answer, uh, it would already be fixed. So. And I, I don't have a, a video here to sit and say, no, he, he's too wide. 
Yeah, he, he came underneath that time. He's got to keep the edge because we lost our edge on defense. Everybody played great, but we didn't have an edge. They bounced outside. You got to get an edge. You got to be outside. So um, that's what I mean. It, it's complicated enough because there's an issue on every defensive play. Um, and, and because we have given, and, and Clemson gave up 45, what, Miami gave up 44. Um, Wisconsin was one of the best defenses in the country. They gave up 52. Playing defense is harder than it used to be. Offenses are scoring more points. Does that an excuse for us? No. We got to be better than we are. So, so I think that's the thing. But I, I, I wish I could have a simple answer for you. It would sound like an excuse, and I'm not going to do that anymore. Can the issue be fixed in season, or is it something that you're going to have to wait until the next offseason and have a little bit of time? It needs to be fixed this week. It's better than it was in the opener already, and people wouldn't think so. We just played the best team we're going to play. And there were some good moments. We hang, we hung in there and fought them at times. Uh, not enough. So, uh, yeah, it's getting better, and, and it's getting better every day. And I'm gonna keep pulling for these kids, and I'm gonna keep encouraging them, and, and keep their heads up. What a what a great teachable moment for for these kids in their life. Things aren't good. Got to fix it. You can't lay down and quit. You can't put it off. And you can't make excuses. It is what it is. What is your level of frustration right now? And is there um, I don't get angry. I, I really don't. I get passionate. I, I get um, I get uh, challenged. I get driven. Uh, anger doesn't do any good. That, that, that's just a waste of time, waste of energy. Um, uh, frustration. Um, I'd rather call it passion than frustration, but it's probably somewhere in between. Very honestly, um, my job is to fix it. Uh, my job is to fix the running game on the offense. My job is to fix stopping the run on defense. My job is to stop the, the explosive plays on defense. My job is to, to get so we can uh, make some differences in the special teams. My job is to recruit every player and make sure they're great and they're good kids and, and, and they make great grades and they represent us really well all the time and they knock hell out everybody every Saturday. That's my job. That's my job. And never in my 32 years as a head coach has there been something I didn't need to fix. And 50% of the coaches are standing up here today talking about things they need to fix. And really 75% because the ones that won really had a lot of bad plays. And, and it's, like I said, Appalachian struggled and they got a Hail Mary and everything's good. Um, Arkansas is kicking a field goal to win the game with 22 seconds left. They hit the top of the upright and it goes off. So Arkansas had an awful day. And oh my gosh, A&M had a great game. No. We have to look at everything that happens during the game, win or lose. If you win, it's a whole lot easier because everybody forgets all the bad things. When you lose, everybody sits and looks at every little negative bad thing that happened. We have to do that anyway. We're, we're seeing a different level of passion from you today than we did by did you address the team a little bit differently yesterday? Did they see a little bit more passion? I think I have passion all the time. Sometimes I think the tone is a little bit different. Right? Yeah, uh, I think we can be good, and we're not. So I want them, I want them to understand that. And Saturday we played a team that was better than we were on the day we played, and they fought. And I've told them as long as you fight and you compete, we got a chance, man. Don't give up. Don't get your head down. I didn't like what I saw at South Carolina last year. I didn't think we fought, but that, that's, I, I'm not going to have that happen again. I want this team to keep competing and this team to keep fighting. And that's what I told them. I told them that after the game, are we messing a bunch of stuff up? Yes. Can we fix it? Only if you keep busting your tail, man. You, I'm, I'm going to give you all I've got. I want you to give us all you've got. Give me, a, give me all you've got. Give me 100%. We'll be good. We'll be fine in time. But we've got to fix things. You mentioned the offensive line doing a better job of protecting Drake May. Do you feel like the offensive line is more suited to protecting a quarterback than allowing the run game to succeed, or is it just issues with the play calling? Where do you see? No, I I, I don't think that that we're we're again. That's why we have coordinators in here. Y'all want me to be the coordinator and answer all the defensive and offensive questions, and Phil would be so disappointed if he didn't have to answer your bad questions. Because uh, he's been excited all morning. He told me he just can't wait. He, he's, he got his coffee, so he'd be ready to go. Um, we are inconsistent again in some areas. And 
We're, we're running the ball like we did last year by numbers. If you look at it, it's, a, it's nearly the same exactly. I just want to run it better in situations like first down. That, that's, that, that's what we've got to do. We've got to do better on first down. Again, when I talk, it's hard. You all hear pieces. And I'm talking about a huge football program, and you get pieces, and you take pieces because you have to. That's your job. I did your job. And you get sound bites. And we have to be really, really careful that what, what I'm saying is what you're hearing. Because what I say is very important. What you hear is more important because that's what you're going to print. And sometimes it's not what I said. Okay? Yes? Mac, a couple of weeks ago you told us unprompted that you had total confidence in Gene uh, and the defense. I mean, how much has that confidence been shaken now? Yeah. Just a couple of weeks ago? Uh, none. So a couple of weeks later. Yeah, it, none. He's one of the best in the country at what he does. That's, that's why it's... It's confusing that we're not playing better um, and we're all trying to figure it out, but we're not fighting. We're not blaming each other. We're not pointing fingers. Kids and the coaches are hanging in there, uh, but we, we just got to keep getting better. Like I said, he and I had a long talk last night and, and our, our talk wasn't me screaming at him. I mean, it's, it's obvious we're, we're making mistakes and we got to quit doing that. Are there a lot of people with the same problems this morning? There really are. Uh, you just got to fix yours. Quit worrying about everybody else's. That's what's going to follow up with you. Talk, you said it was a hard talk, I think. Like, what? Every talk I have is hard during the fall. It really is. I, I mean, I had a hard talk with Phil this morning, the whole offensive staff last night and this morning about running on first down. I, I mean, I, what I do is I do what you all do. I take it into them and I said, guys, here's the numbers. Numbers don't lie. Tell me, what, let's, let's watch it. Show me why we're not making more yards running on first down. I want to know why and I want to know what you're going to do to fix it. So I'm the fan, I'm the media. I ask him, Gene, we're giving up way too many yards rushing. Why? Man, what are we doing? What are we doing? Come on, man, tell me, show me. Show me what you're, what's wrong and what we're gonna do to fix it. And, and that's, that's what I do, that's my job. And you got a satisfactory answer. Well, yeah, I mean, you always gonna get a satisfactory answer. I wanna see results. I don't want answers, I want results. I want to see product. I mean, my, my job is to win games here. That's my job. That, and, and do it within the rules and, and be a positive representative for the university. That's my job. I take my job very seriously and have for my whole life. This is what I do. I got my family, I got football, and, and I've got uh, um, family. <laughs> yeah, really, it's, that, that's it. But, but really, uh, our kids, our grandkids, our football family and winning games is all I got. That's all I got. That's my whole life. So, and, I, and my faith, that was the other one I missed. I mean, so, yeah, you did. You just put it. You, you gave the wrong one. Anything else before we let Phil come up here and get to enjoy y'all? Um, your first time, your first tenure here, it seemed like, uh, like there weren't quarterbacks that passed the ball the way Sam Howell did and now Drake right Mays kind of taking his baton. Is that at all uh, attributed to, you know, it's a different game, like the passing game is a lot more, you know, developed complex, they start earlier in high school, 77 kind of stuff. Is, is it more attributed to that or, you know, are we are we just seeing right now two kind of generational talents, if you will, that came through? See, I think it's absolutely um, a, a function of seven on seven. They're starting to go to more camps, they're going earlier, they're going all over the country. Uh, I think kids are handling you guys better at an earlier age. That's why we allow freshmen to do it now because they're, they're talking to so many people in recruiting now. They never did that before. You know, they didn't have any experience when they got here. And now they've, they've talked to you guys and the, the recruiting services forever. So they're, they're much more prepared for, for that. But same thing with, with uh, uh, quarterbacks. And then you take a guy like Sam, he was raised by his dad who's a coach. You take a guy like Drake, his dad was the leading pastor in the ACC, so he was teaching him at a very early age to, to throw the ball and what to think about, and they've watched so many football games together. Um, but I also think that this rash of, of group of five teams beating um, power five teams is a lot because of transfer quarterbacks. I think the transfer portal, if a kid's a second team or in a school and he's really good, he may go to another school and be a great player for them. And that didn't happen before. Um, 
but everybody's got a quarterback now. And if you can throw the ball, it's like three-point shooters. If you can shoot in basketball and you can hit a bunch of three-pointers, you got a chance to win every week. If you got a quarterback that can throw it and run, you got a chance to win every week. I mean, that's just what's out there, and that was never the case before. Usually, when you beat down the bad teams, they didn't have quarterbacks. Now they got skill. Everybody got fast receivers. Uh, everybody's got a quarterback. Everybody's got a fast running back. Most people are going really fast, and they're spreading those linemen out. So usually, they didn't have really great offensive linemen at, at the, the group of five level. Now it doesn't matter. You're playing in space. So you can get enough fast guys to, to, to give you fits. Yeah. Anything else? Yes, Russ. I got questions for days. Um, one thing in particular, I, I know when you kind of when you got here and, and even um, this offseason, you've always talked about having an attacking defense, a defense that can create TFLs and sacks and put the offense behind the count. It seems like this defense in the scheme rushes four, rarely blitzes, and drops seven. It's more of a you know, yeah. everything in front. I was wondering, is there any. Um, yeah, Gene, Gene, Gene will be here in just a minute. Well, I'm asking what you yeah. want versus what, what, what's happening. We blitzed so much on Saturday and didn't get there. Go back and look at it. We blitzed so much. We had those linebackers coming. We got there once with power. We didn't get there another time. They blocked us. So blitzing is very, very irrelevant if you don't get there. It puts your secondary in an awful spot. And I told the, I told the team before the game, that when God made football, he put a burden on defensive backs. They've got, they're out there by themselves. Everybody can see them. They take the fastest player on the other team and they have to cover him by backing up. And they can't touch him or it's pass interference. So how awful for those defensive backs. So I told the team, so you guys have to get pressure on a quarterback you got to stop the run so we can help those guys survive out there because if you blitz and they have to cover for a long time, it's impossible. They can't do it. And then I said, the other guy's got the burden as a quarterback. He got all kind of people trying to hit him. So if you don't run the ball and you don't protect the quarterback, he's got to stand there unprotected. He's got to find the open receivers. He's got to look at two or three of them. He's got to make a decision. And he's got to get the ball to, to the wide receiver. Or maybe we, we put the burden on him of RPO. Now he's got to decide, are we going to run it? Nope, I'm going to pass it. And then I've got to get back here in time to see the open guy. So it's not blitzing. It's getting there. And we're not getting there. When they're blocking us like they did on Saturday, it doesn't matter what you do. If you're running inside and they're blocking you, it just lets the gap open faster. But we blitzed a lot Saturday. We, we did different things. It's just hard to notice it when you don't stop people. Okay? Anybody else? Thank you. Thank you all.